Okay, we are live. Welcome everyone to Weekend Wind Down with business coach Nancy. I am here every week at 4.30 with a guest speaking about some topic that's going to help you grow your business, primarily focused on interior designers. I'm also a certified body language and I specialize in marketing and sales and getting you to be a profitable business. So cheers, Laurie. Welcome to my Weekend Wind Down. I know you're on the West Coast, so it's only water for you. That that's okay. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Let me, just, let me just make sure that we are truly live because technology is odd. And sometimes it's been burping on me. And sometimes people hear a live, sometimes they hear on replay. If you're here on replay and you have a question for us, I always say put hashtag replay so that we know. All right, let me scroll down first before we get started. I'm actually really very excited for this topic. So I'm hoping people are going to be watching live this week. You can never tell with this time of year. And I know it's the holidays for some people. Let me just see that we are definitely live. We are definitely live. Let me go share it into my share it in a group. Facebook has a new thing that says share in a group and watch together. So that's completely new. So if you wow. are here watching with us, please say hi to us. Let us know who you are. Hi, Diane. You could see us. Excellent. Let me just share it in my group, the Interior Design Business Forum. If you are not in my group and you are an interior design professional, please get there. Hi, Susan. Let's see, now I can do this. Diane, so you can see, uh, Lori, so you can see it up on the screen. So, hi, Diane. What so clever. I know. This is Be Live. You know what? It's, it's a little quirky, but I can't seem to get off of it because I just like it. Okay, so I am joined today by Lori Sawaya. She is a color strategist and creator of Camp Chroma. Now, we were just talking before we went live. Yeah. And as you guys know, I'm a business coach, business, business, business. I am not an interior designer. I used to be an art consultant. Um, so I'm going to find this topic fascinating. Lori, just give everyone an overview of what we're going to talk about today. And then we're just going to get right into it because it's really amazing. We are going to talk about the latest and greatest color tools and technologies that are available. Uh, so most of it's under 100 bucks. And all you have to do is learn how to use it. Okay. So you have, when you say color technologies, my mind automatically went to these stupid apps on my phone that I downloaded when I was moving and, and went, oh, like, let me hold it up against the wall and see what color it is. Or this piece of artwork and the one color. And I get back the weirdest things. And I thought, I don't know how to use this anyway. So I just deleted it. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, we're not talking about the phones, right? You can't take a picture of a color and get any information from that. All of those apps where you just take a picture and then it like gives you a pixelation and it says, oh, it matches, you know, this paint color. Um, those aren't real color tools. Those are more like, they're fun to play with. They're inspirational, right? That's that's what you can say. What I'm talking about are colorimeters and spectrophotometers. And those- Can are you really say that a little slower? Colorimeters and spectrophotometers. Oh, and those big weird, big words scare a lot of people, but that's a really good thing if you're an interior designer and you're trying to carve out a specialized niche in color because that's not it's not crowded because you know people are looking for easy and it doesn't look easy on the outside. But once you get on the inside, it's kind of amazing how simple it is. Okay, I'm going to right from the beginning of this broadcast tell everyone don't disappear because what Lori told me is that how much did you make in one day by doing <laughs> virtual color consults? My, my best my best virtual color consultation day ever was I did 15 consultations in one day and it was about a $2200 day. And this is without speaking to the client. This is all done over email. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you're thinking about disappearing, don't. Because you're going to learn how you too can increase your services 
to another whole market that you may never have thought of. And I'm not talking yes. about in-person color consultations, which you can still do and charge your consult fee, but this is all virtual based. How many of you have heard of these color tools is question number one, say, yes, I have. And question number two is, if you have any of these tools, tell me which one you have while I'm gonna ask Lori to kind of hold them up and tell us what they're called. You wanna go through all of them? We can go I through all of them. That's do. I really do, because I don't think people okay. really understand this unless they see it. Okay, okay, well, let's start with the big daddy. This is the newest one. This is called Spectro One. It's by Variable Ink. This is a spectrophotometer. And this is not the same kind of bench top, kind of, you know, super duper kind of, uh, super expensive kind of device, kind of instrument that they use in color labs, but it is pretty darn close. It's really close. And it's $300. And uh, some of you out there, if you're, you know, if, you, if you're listening in, it's probably because um, you know that I talk about color, color science often and the website Easy RGB. So this device is going to get you the same kinds of results that you're looking up on easyrgb.com, which is a website. So that's a spectrophotometer. It measures uh, more wavelengths. And um, hey, Susan, she is my, she is a camp crumma girl. Yeah. And um, it measures more weight. So it captures more of the color, ca captures more color information than a colorimeter. And this is a colorimeter. This is a color muse, right? So this is a little cheaper. This is $60. The Spectro one was $300. And um, another device is NYX. This is a NYX mini. Okay. This is a little, little one. This is also a colorimeter. And the last one, oh, I have two more. And this is a Color Reader Pro. You can get this one from Data Color and it'll give you a little readout of data here on the side. So that's an option. That's a colorimeter. This one's really cool. This one comes from Sweden. It's not easy to get here in the States. This is called a Color Catch Nano. This is also a colorimeter, but this one attaches with a cable to your device. And this one can measure down to the resolution of a single thread. When you say your device, what does that mean? iPad or iPhone, smartphone. Okay. iPad or smartphone. I yeah, and, okay. and then they all have an app that you download. And then that's how you get the color measurement data from your device to a display where you can read it and do stuff with it. Okay, so let's start from scratch. You have a client. And I use this as an example. I just hung this artwork today. It's going to fall off the wall, guys, because I couldn't hang it. I didn't have somebody else, so it's like half up there. But I could pick out like, hey, Laurie, I just I feel like I want to paint my walls another color. And I'm thinking like this one little color in here. Right, right. Does the client have to have one of these devices to send you the information? Yes, that's, uh, that's one of my requirements for um, my online clients. And I just really started doing that uh, in the last several months. Well, this year, I'd say, oh, God, this is what, October. So I guess it's been a little while. So this year, I've started asking people to purchase a Color Muse because it's only $60. If you order uh, in, you know, early in the day, you can have it delivered Amazon Prime the same day. You can also go pick one up at the Home Depot, some Sherwin-Williams store. Um, yeah. So, you know, this is how homeowners are getting a hold of them. They're standing there at the counter at Sherwood Williams and say, hey, what's this thing? It's 60 bucks. They throw it in there. They're already spending right 1500 bucks on paint. So what's, you know, it's another 60 bucks. And, you know, they're, they're, um, they're in retail stores. So they're accessible, super accessible to homeowners. And um, Amazon is great because, like I said, if you have Prime, you can get it the same day. So what do people think they're going to use this for when they buy it? Like, what is a homeowner thinking when they see this at the paint store and they go, oh, you know, you should use this. They get it home. They hold it up against a pillow or an artwork. They, oh, what do they think they're doing with it? Like, <laughs> well, Because I, well, like, I don't know how to use this thing. Why would I buy it? Right. Well, how they're marketed, at, they're marketed as a paint color matching tool. So... The, what they what they tell consumers is that you can take this device and you can scan a color and it will sh search a library. It will search a, a database of paint colors and it will tell you the closest paint color that matches, right? So it will search a database. That 
is the that's that's not the way we use it. We we go much deeper than that, and we get to the actual color DNA because uh, accuracy is is more important to us because we're color experts, right? So the problem with um, and that you know the consumer facing or the consumer level use is pretty effective too, but. Um, you know, you have to select a specific brand of paint. And so if you select Benjamin Moore, it's going to give you the results for Benjamin Moore. Well, there might be a better color out there uh, that is a better fit for that specific situation than what that level of the app is, is telling you, right? So, okay. So if I moved into my new rental here and I have a white wall, but we know there's a million of what millions of whites and I bought this little thing and I held it up against the wall, I'm going to get the closest match that the app that's connected to the device can find. So if I want to patch up something or use the same color somewhere, I could. In theory, that's that's what they're selling. Yeah, that's but there, there's a there's a much, you know, they do a whole lot more than that. And there's a better way to use the data that those devices capture than that, than searching the library that's attached to the device. That's what people, that's the only thing people think these things do. And the, the thing that they, they don't think about is if you get a result back from the app and you go pull that color and you, and it's like, well, this isn't close at all. This doesn't work. What people don't understand is it did the best it could searching the colors that it had available in the library. Right. So it's like it's not telling you, it's not giving you this is the precise match 100% what it's answering. The question it's answering is, what color do you have that's close to the color on my wall? And you get an answer. So it's not, it's, you know, and sometimes it hits it straight on because that color exists in Benjamin Moore. And sometimes it doesn't because that paint color doesn't exist. Right. So now I get it home and I'm trying to match a color in my artwork because I want to put it on my wall and I have no idea what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I go to the internet and I start searching for help. Yeah. And how, do. who do they find? Usually me. <laughs> and because how, how did you get to that status? I love this. I <laughs> need to understand when you're marketing yourself, and this is, I mean, I've known for niche is rich and broad is broke and everyone's concerned about doing that. Yeah. This is a niche. And yeah. <laughs> how did you get to be found? Well, when uh, Variable Inc., who is the maker of the device called Color Muse, first released a device to the market, what, five, six years ago now? It was called a node, right? And, um, so it was called the node. And so George Yu, who was the inventor of it and, you know, the CEO of Variable, um, I reached out to him. I said, because, you know, and we haven't talked about my background, but I was a graphic designer for 13 years. I got years. that part. I got so excited about the color thing. We're going to go back to your background, but go ahead. Okay. So, you know, I was a graphic designer for 13 years. And so when I left graphic design and got into architectural color consulting and how that happened was, is we built a house, right? Our first house. And so it's like, there is a whole story to, to that. And then I decided, you know what, I'm going to try my hand at color in the three-dimensional world <laughs> instead of just on paper, two-dimensional. But I brought with me from my background in graphic design, this core knowledge of color science, color measurements, notations, and data values. And when I got to the architectural space, I was like, where, where are all of your color experts? You know, it was like drastically different because there were none. And honestly, in the architectural space, according to my standards, there still aren't any color experts really? out there. Absolutely not. No. But how do you, okay, I have so many questions. Okay, finish this story. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm so. interrupting you. So anyway, so, you know, I, I started the whole architectural thing. And so when I saw George come out with this node and it was correlated to paint colors, I'm like, finally, somebody from my world, <laughs> it's like entering in this architectural coding space. And so I contacted him. I said, hey, I would like to have my own app because this is, you know, I need to be able to do something with light reflectance value that 
there are no tools for currently. Can I make a tool? Can I make my own app? Can you help me? And he's like, sure, we'll give you access to the API. And I've been working with Variable ever since. <laughs> and um, I sell the, the I sell my app on iTunes for 10 bucks a download. I had it free for a while, learned many lessons about offering things for free. I'll never do that again. Yeah, don't do that. Okay. <laughs> Look, I just have to break this down to English because even though the designers are mostly watching, mostly designers watch this show, I'm not sure they will understand all the acronyms you're using and all the, right? So you have an app that works hand in hand with one of those devices on your desk. Yes. Which one? Hold it up again. Uh, the Color Muse. The and Color actually, Muse. Yeah. And actually when you sign up for my course, mm -hmm. you get one of these in your kit. Okay, so I have, I have it down your course. It's Camp Chroma. We're gonna we're gonna save that to the end, but I want to make sure everybody knows that you have a course to teach them. And here's what I love about this, and this is what I was gonna interrupt you before about. When I was teaching marketing and sales and networking and everything, I thought I need some science behind what I teach. And that's when I become a, became a certified body language trainer because body language is literally 90% of the sale as opposed to what you say. Yeah. So I felt finally like I have science behind what I teach in that area at least. And this is the ability for interior designers to have science behind color selection for their clients by taking oh. your course, correct? Oh, more science than you know what to do with. I'm sure I would be like, I would be like, I don't know what you're talking about. But, well, it's, but, it's, but that's the thing. That's the, that's the greatest thing. It's not that hard. You just need someone to show you. It is an evidence-based approach to color. An evidence-based approach to color. It's that simple. Give me an example because that to me, again, is like, wh what does that mean? Like I can tell stories about how someone knows whether they're going to hire you within the first three seconds without even you opening your mouth. That's evidence-based based on studies. What's yep. evidence-based color? Okay. So, well, this is a tangible skill set, right? When you understand color data values, when you understand how to measure color, not just take a picture of color, but measure color, capture its DNA, and then interpret and analyze that data, that's a tangible skill set. And then when you develop a color strategy, we use that data as a jumping off point, right? We don't color by numbers. Everybody knows. <laughs> I do. <laughs> we do not color by numbers. But the numbers are a framework for you to use as a jumping off point to develop a color design plan. Okay, give me an example. You walk into, let's do commercial design first. Okay. When you said in the commercial world, the architectural world, there are no color strategists, color specialists, how do you even sell yourself to them? And then what do you do when you get in the door? What do I do when I get in the door? Well, the first thing we do is I establish what, you know, the fixed finishes and the important elements. What's going in the space? What are we doing here? Because you're always starting from some point, right? There's always some sort of color in the space. There's always a color decision has to be made. So you look at the color decisions that have to be made, the color decisions that have been made to establish what the fixed finishes are and what the important elements are. And then we measure those elements. If it's a piece of tile for the flooring, we measure the colorways in the tile and we pull all that data for those colors, the color DNA. And we do that for all of the elements. And then I lay all the data out and I take a look at what Hue families we're working with. Right, we establish the, the important Hue families, the core Hue families, and then it's just basic color theory as far as what colors go together. And so now I can start putting my color plan together, figuring out color harmonies based on the data and based on the physical finishes, the physical materials. And so when we start, when we use that framework of data, of pulling the actual DNA from those materials, the fixed finishes, the important elements, to begin with, when we have that framework, that's an evidence-based framework to start from. 
which is very different from how your typical interior designer works. No one knows really how an interior designer decides what finishes go together. And you can market from that standpoint as well. It's like, you know, I have this special ability. I've been, you know, and I'm going to say this if Luann Nagara is listening, she's going to like, she'll be all over this because, you know, Luann says, she talks about people talking about in their bio about playing with their crayons when they were little and then the boxes and rearranged furniture and how she's like, don't talk about that in your bio. Right. Don't do that. Right. Yeah. So else, everyone started out creative in some way. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. But, and so that's where a lot of, you know, that's the place that a lot of interior designers speak to uh, come from in terms of their color sensibility and why they have it. But, when you have this evidence-based approach, when you have this science-backed um, approach to color, you now have another thing to talk about in your bio that's a little more tangible, and in my opinion, <laughs> is a little more elevated in terms of professionalism to speak about as opposed to those charming stories of being left home at, you know, home alone for the first time and your parents came home to a fully <laughs> remodeled home. No, I really, you're right. Because it would be like me as a business coach saying, I started out with a lemonade stand. Like, who cares? <laughs> right? like, who cares that I, you know, that I started out with a lemonade stand and I sold stuff when I was 10, you know, eight years old or whatever. It's true. Like nobody cares <laughs> what you did as a kid. They just want to know what you can do for them today. But and how do you sell? I mean, again, from a business standpoint, I always try to pull out the business. I love the fact that there are solid scientific credentials to back your talent mm -hmm. and extend your abilities. Mm -hmm. How do you sell it to someone as mattering? <laughs> this is one thing I never saw coming. Okay. Like, um, you know, this is my thing. When I got into architectural color, you know, like I said, I was, I realized I was the unicorn in the color consulting space. And really in the beginning, I thought, well, maybe there's something I don't know, <laughs> you know, because they're all using different terms. They're, this is, it was just so foreign. I thought, well, I'll just sit down and shut up and, you know, you know, listen for a while. And after a while, I realized it's like, um, yeah, <laughs> there's a problem there's um, a gap, there's something missing here. And um, so I started talking about, you know, doing what I do. And I, I'm on House a lot. It was called the Garden Web and House bought the Garden Web, which is a discussion forum. And I get a lot of clients from there. And so I, I always tell everyone, go into those discussion forums and, and weigh in because that's what makes people look you up. Oh, Oh, I we, we could do a whole wind down about discussion forums because yes. I've been on the garden web since 2004, 15 years I've been there on, you know, that was social media in 2004. Right. And yeah. I have, I don't know, over 25,000 posts or something ridiculous, but um, that's where a lot of people have found me and mm -hmm. I speak to color differently. And this is what I didn't see coming. There is an underserved market of people who are not into the whole, I'm an interior designer with a special gift for color and I can read the room and I can read you and it's the energy that I bring with color and the color psychology and the symbol, you know, all that stuff. There are people who are not into that. Right, some people are, but there's again, a demographic that are very analytical who would be like, wait, that's way too foo-foo for me. Don't tell me you're going to come into my space and read the energy and pick out the colors that you can see me living in. Right. Exactly. You, you're saying you're going to take, you're going to walk in my house and you're going to go, okay, I can see you like this, 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 and this based on what you've chosen already. Mm -hmm. Now let me take the color DNA of certain things mm -hmm. and come back to you with my recommendations. Yeah, it's the analytical framework that they're attracted to. And yeah. just let me say, when it comes to the color psychology and the energy of color, I'm totally on board with that. In fact, you know, I, I took the IACCNA seminars first, which is all about human support of color for the built environment. So I'm a thousand percent on board with that. But what I discovered was this underserved market of people who, you know, if some people think that what I'm talking about right now, the color science and color measurements are super confusing and the big words and all the diagrams and numbers and oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, 
But there are people who, when you're talking about, when, when designers speak about color in their designer speak, they're losing these people. They're not relating to how designers are speaking to color in those terms, than those creative and artistic terms. Well, what's what's popping into my head is that often people are designing for the sexes, right? They have a husband and they have a wife and that each of them are very different. And you could be speaking more, I'm gonna call it foo-foo, not to insult anyone, but more like ethereal, this is what I'm feeling that you would like based on your personality, based on what I see. And then the husband or wife, it could be the one, you could turn around and go, and when I use my, whatever you called it, I come up with the DNA. I like, my brain doesn't work this way. I know, you know, I'm not a designer, right? So I use this and this is how I'm analyzing it. And then I'm melding the two. And now you've satisfied both of them. The art and science of color is yes. what you're bringing to the table. Yes, the art and science. Oh, I love it. I love it. Right now, the only thing designers are bringing to the table is color sensibility and the art part. They have no knowledge of the science part because this is not taught in interior design school because this it really is an elite level of color knowledge. But again, from the outside, it looks so sciencey and like such a big deal. But once somebody shows you how to do it, you're like, shut the door. There is no way that's all there is to it. So let's go back to my example of commercial, architectural, commercial spaces. How do you market to them? How do I really you don't. I haven't, You've never I, haven't, I haven't marketed to, to commercial because, you know, commercial's bigger and you have to go there. And I kind of figured out a pretty good deal. I mean, for me to like get in my car and go somewhere, it's going to have to be, <laughs> it's going to have to be for a really good reason. Yep. Everyone listen up. For me to get in my car and go anywhere, it's got to be for a pretty good reason. I feel the same way, by the way. Yeah. Um, so residential. Let me tell you how I do that one. Let's do that. Okay. So <clears throat> oh, wait, have... Susan said something. Let's bring it up because it's going to block all our faces because she said a lot. Okay. I matched a color in an existing damask wallpaper of a client and was able to show them exactly why their existing color on the adjacent wall was wrong and why... What I was suggesting was an exact you family match. Easy to see the difference. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Thank you, Susan. Okay. So that's, that's a great, yeah. So that's a great application for what you're teaching. Yeah. It's hard to argue with data, right? You, you can, you can spin and sit and spin in opinions all day long. The painter has an opinion. You know, the guy at the tile store has an opinion. The, the grout guy, has, everybody has an opinion. But it's like, okay, guys, I, you know, thanks for your input, but here's what the data says. So, mm -hmm. and then it has another point of view that's objective and not subjective to consider. Okay. I totally get that. They may still want to argue with it because some people are just argumentative, but you know that when you choose the color and put it up on the wall now, it's not going to be like, oh my God, I chose that color and I'm not sure I like it. And I'm hoping the client doesn't feel the same way. Right. I mean, chosen. You know, yeah. Somebody still has to make a color decision. Even after we, we have this, this uh, framework to work from, um, someone still has to make a color decision, but what happens with homeowners in particular, they feel a lot better about the decision that they're making because they feel like they've, they've explored every Avenue because I can tell them like uh, when my clients, uh, scan the picture behind you and you send me five or six screenshots of the colors in that artwork behind you. I do the analysis. I choose, you know, I find all the viable paint colors, you know, a light one, a grayer one, a more colorful one, a darker one. You know, I like to give options, a range of options. I can confidently say to my client, it's like, hey, look, I looked through 30 different brands of paint for all of the colors that are gonna work with your artwork based on the data you sent me, and these are the results. And at that point in time, they stop collecting, they stop the insanity, the madness of collecting on the paint chips because they know yes. there isn't another paint chip out there that they haven't found yet. I can tell them that. I can tell them what's out there without ever picking up a paint chip. 
This is so interesting to me. So if I wanted to change the color of these walls, I could buy one of those things. Give it the name again. Color Muse. Color Muse. I got to write that down. I could color muse. scan my artwork. Yeah. Send it to you via the data, via email. Screenshot it, then send me the email. And you'll come up with kind of like, let's just say light, medium, dark, different options for me. And then, of course, like you said, I have to make a decision on the feeling that I want for the room. Which one do you like? Is it pretty? Then pick it's it up. And you can do this all virtually. A hundred percent virtually. And, and for those of you who are watching now that were not watching in the beginning, your best day, 15 virtual color consults for yeah. how much money? It was a $2,200 day. And I'm telling to tell you, you're undercharging, by the way, for 15 consults, you're probably undercharging. Well, you know, it's, you know, Ed, you know, I did those 15 consultations in like about five, six hours. All 15? Yeah. Listen, for those of you who are sick of carrying shit around for a living, this is a really good option. Well, uh, you know, and let's talk about that too, because even if you're doing on-site consultations, which I, which I still do here in Phoenix, yeah. uh, it's not my favorite thing to do because the architecture here is just so static. I mean, it's the same damn house everywhere I go, mm -hmm. right? Everybody has an orange tile roof. It's just not, it's not fun for me. And, you know, it's, you know, Dun Edwards baked potato and miner's dust. That's that's what we're gonna that's where we're gonna end up <laughs> before I even before I even get my lipstick on. It's like we're gonna you know, I know it's gonna be baked potato. It's it's just not fun for me. <laughs> Everything's very brown and orange. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it has to be because it's you know ridiculous here because of the, the weather. But anyway, that's a whole other topic too. So, you know, I still do them, but even if you're doing on-site consultations, I I just I don't really cringe. I don't know what it is when I when I feel what I what I feel when I see designers holding a fan deck up to a wall, flipping through the leaves, thinking they're going to find match up the color that they see on the wallpaper on the wall. I'm like, oh my god! Do you know it's 2019? Do you guys also have a fax machine at home? I mean, okay, don't make me a fax machine. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, I think this is so fascinating because if you're an interior designer going in for an initial consultation and you're bringing your color muse and they've never seen it before and you are holding it up against a pillow, a drapes or anything that they already have existing that they're keeping and you're able to give them some data right then and there. How impressive are you? Yeah, you know, and... You know, and that's the other thing, too. It's there's this whole, um, I don't know, this, you know, illusion or there's some kind of that it's a special that you're supposed to be able to, a color consultant, a designer is supposed to be able to walk in a room and immediately know, you know, what's supposed to happen in terms of paint colors in particular. And I'm like, you know, that was another thing that was odd to me when I entered this world. It's like, no, I mean, you're an expert. I mean, your plumber doesn't come in and just say, I know exactly what you need before he even looks underneath the sink. No other trade works that way. And I think it's a ridiculous standard to put out there that a color consultant is supposed to be able to do that. When I walk into someone's house, you know, I, I let them talk. You know, I, I don't talk much. I let them do the talking and I figure out what I need to do. Which takes two minutes, <laughs> but I <laughs> and um, you know it's like so. What's important is it the rug? Is it the sofa? What's important in the space? What are the key elements that you know we need to fix on? You know, focus on what's the fixed elements, and then I tell them it's like you know what I need to grab some measurements, just like somebody who's installing window treatments is going to need to do. They got to measure your windows, right? I need to grab some measurements of some things. So I grab my measurements. I usually write it down, but the new apps actually, the updates, you can actually save it now and I don't know how to do it. I'm still a little old school with a pen and paper. Okay. So I write down my values that I want. I open up my iPad. You know, I log on to Easy RGB if I need to, or I'm working in the new Spectro One app from Variable is like super powerful. You can pull data from the Spectro One app, the same as you can, you know, the same data that you pull from EasyRGB.com. You know, I do my thing. Whatever I need to do, I need, I pull it together. And I do have colors with me. And I figure out 
where we are and the chips I need to pull or the chips I need to show them or what fan deck I need to show them. And we go from there. And sometimes I have to follow up and send them a large chip, you know, from Sherwin Williams or Benjamin Moore or Don Edwards, which you can do for free. And then they take it from there. They, you know, they, they evaluate the chips. They decide if they want to go buy a sample and have their painter. Cause I never tell them to do their own samples ever, ever, ever. I would say, if you want to have your painter do a sample, then you tell him which colors you'd like to see up. Why not them? Why not have them buy a quart? And oh God. Cause they make a mess. It's like, just really? you know, if, if they're DIYing, then I go through the whole thing about how to sample the color. I actually have another product called Swatch Right. It's a paint peel and stick, a color sample decal. So they're not painting on the wall because you know, all that, it, the, I've, I've had people use a sock before to like, <laughs> and paper towels. It's like, no, no. Really? That's going to absorb the color in a whole different way. Even I know that. Well, it'll, it'll telegraph through, you know, unless somebody like sands the crap out of it and gets, you know, it's like, it's not a good idea to paint the wall yourself. So anyway, I hand it off to them with all of the specs and, you know, all of the information so they can just hand it off to their painter and then they have to make the decision about what color they have in their house. But that's how I do it. I walk in, I take a measure, I take measurements just like any other trade and I take 15, 20 minutes to get it together before I tell them what's going on. And sometimes they're interested and I've had different instances. It's like, well, hey, you know what? You can help me. So it's like I have them hold the, the color muse on the color that they want that they want to focus on. And then I work the app and write down the numbers. This just seems so incredibly different from the way the world is currently working. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really is. I mean, it's it's I, I don't want to say it's taking the talent away because it's not this still combined. It's your talent and the science combined. Oh, well, this is what I always say about that. It's like the data does not interpret itself. It doesn't. It takes a creative human linchpin to interpret that data. And we can't color by numbers alone. So it's, it's, it's an incredibly useful framework for a creative person to use. It's a tool. This, this, it's not a prescription. The numbers aren't prescribed. You know, it's, it, that's not what it is. It's still open for interpretation. It's like going to the doctor, they get a test, and they have to still interpret the test results. Yeah, it's a framework to use. It's right? a framework to use. Does anyone use, besides Susan, who I know took your um, course at Camp Chroma, does anyone else use any of these tools who's listening right now? Um, I'd love to know. I think that besides putting it in your bio that you have science-backed tools for color analysis and selection, how else do you market this? If you want to, you know, I used to be an art consultant, the doors would open up, I need artwork. And then if I work directly with residential homeowners, they'd say, you know, can you help me with my, my sofa also and my window treatments? And I'd say, no, I'm sorry, I'm not a full designer. Mm -hmm. But if I was, oh. that opened the door, right? So color consultations open the door to other things people need done in their homes. Oh, in a big way, because now, you know, it's, it's like a gateway drug. Like when they like get a taste of it at first, it's yes. like they don't want to make any more color decisions without the data behind it. Yeah. And then they get addicted and then you're the only one that they know that does it this way. I actually have um, their art. It's an architecture firm here in Phoenix. There's Robin. Hey, Robin. Hi, Robin. There's um, her name is Stephanie. She works for an architect here in Phoenix, and she found the LRV Guru app when I first introduced it years ago. Well, they have a whole thing with homeowners associations here in Arizona where they call out the architect, the, this architect, the architects or somebody from their firm right. uh, to come out and check the light reflectance values to see if the colors that someone's chosen or the palettes they're thinking about including in the HOA uh, meet certain standards. So they're sending, you know, people out from their office with a color muse just to measure, just to measure colors and say, yeah, this meets the standard. That'll be $250, please. <laughs> All right, so tell me, 
if you're not, if you're going to go, I always say, if you build it, they will not necessarily come. You have to go after it. If you are certified by Camp Cromer, do you call it a certification? I do, because, you know, if you go through the four pillars of color, of course, the four pillars are hue, value, chroma, and light reflectance value. You wait, you slow, down, slow down. Say that again. It's hue, right? Hue, value, value. chroma, and light reflectance value. Okay. If you understand those four attributes of color, um, there's really nothing that you can't figure out. And um, by the time you're finished with my course, which takes about 18 hours, right? It's it's not months or weeks or anything. Um, you know what you're talking about. You have a handle on that science to the point where you, in some cases, you know more about paint colors than the people working in a paint store. So I feel super confident saying you're certified because you really do have a tangible skill set that other people don't have. And how do you take that and market it to residential homeowners who color certification means nothing to them? So you have to talk their language. Sure. I mean, and a lot of people are already good at that because they've been, you know, talking their language and whatever terminology somebody wants to use, you know, you're the professional. You just have to filter that, you know, filter through that and then translate it into your terms in terms, you know, in my case, translate that into um, a scientific model, into a scientific framework and then figure it out. But they don't need to know, you know, all of the, the gory details behind it. You know, they, they just need the result. So you can market yourself as a color specialist. Color strategist. Color <laughs> strategist. Yeah. Um, for residential homeowners inside, outside, commercial yeah. spaces, healthcare, wellness, right? Oh. Because you also, do you also teach the, the psychology behind color also? I don't. Um, I don't. And, you know, that's another reason why I chose this niche for my training course. That's so saturated. There are so many people talking about color psychology and how color affects us. And there's so many people, speakers about that. You know, there's so many people talking about that already. And like I said, I'm into that, too. I'm down with all of that. A hundred percent. But they can you know, find that elsewhere. You're teaching the yeah. science behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And the same with the business of color. I didn't, you know, when in my course, it's a hundred percent focused on color, start to finish. We're talking about how color works. I'm not talking about the business of color. I'm not talking about how to market your services. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about, a, I'm giving you a tangible skill set. So you have a foundation, you have something to actually go sell. Yeah, well, Robin's saying that she would also take a color psychology course from you. <laughs> so if you want to develop another course, you're going to have takers, right? Once you have followers, just yeah. keep developing new courses. Um, well, I do talk about, you know, I talk about a range of things, a broader range of things in my Camp Chroma group on Facebook. I do talk about, you know, everything in there. Is your Goodbye. Camp Chroma group on Facebook a open to everyone or just people who've gone through your course? I open it up to designers who are interested in Camp Chroma, okay. you know, and um, it's like, if you're interested in what we're talking about, you know, hop on in and ask questions if you want. And that's, you know, because I understand this is such a completely different and new thing. Um, and I don't blog about it a lot. I'm not a big blogger. I, you know, I, I'm mostly on the house forums, the garden web is where, you know, that's been my link to consumers and clients. You know, it's been very, so let's talk about the garden web because when I did art consulting for 17 years, I was all over the forums and we never paid for house and we always got a decent amount of consistent reach outs from house. And they were not just tire kickers. We got people who actually bought artwork. Yeah. Um, just by giving really good descriptions of the images we uploaded and participating in the forums. And this is, again, like I'm very into organic marketing. I very rarely tell any of my clients to pay for marketing. Um, there's so much free stuff out there. So talk about the forums for a, a little bit, because I think whether it's for color or whether it's for your other interior design services, 
these forums are really able to bring people to looking at your house site and possibly reaching out to you. Yeah, totally. It's, um, you know, it's just the house forums. They have a specific paint forum. They have a home deck forum. They have a lighting forum, I think. I don't know. I'm all, I'm mostly in the paint forum and uh, the home deck forum. I think it's called decorating dilemmas or something. Mm -hmm. And when you're responding to people's questions, yep. do you say to them, let me know if you need any help. I do this virtually. Never. Okay, good. Because I never did either, right? I just... You, they will end up looking you up. They will find you. And in, in fact, in my profile on Hal's, because I get so many messages and so many questions, I, in my profile, I say, I don't answer emails here. I don't answer messages here. I have a color consulting firm. I have a color training program. I can't. Really? But people will hunt me down and send me an email or they find my page with my packages, which you know I'm changing all the time, to be honest, and they just buy a package because they already know how I work. And you know I've had several clients who have already owned a Color Muse. They pull all of the data from the artwork or whatever, they put it in a spreadsheet, and they say, this is what I have. Can you take a look at this for me? This is what I'm thinking about doing. Can you tell me if this is a good idea or not? And can you suggest a white to go with the wall color I'm thinking about? You know, just, you know, review it and consult. Uh, I just love this. I can't tell you how much I love this because um, I have clients who live in very remote areas and they have to travel very far to do what they love to do. And this is another stream of income for them that they could pursue yeah. that can be done, you know, everyone's looking at the internet, how can I sit on my ass all day behind the computer, right? <laughs> Which, trust me, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Um, no, it's not, I've been doing it for 15 years, it's not. Yeah, yeah, you start to get the spread and you have to walk around and you know, I do it um, and it's not easy. But it's often easier than what you guys are doing who are listening, which is getting up every day, getting dressed, going out to consults. Some of you are still doing free consults, which I want to bang my head against the wall for. Uh -huh. um, and this is a way of supplementing your income that is really very doable, very doable. And then it becomes a marketing challenge, right? To, to just say, to reach new audiences for what you can do. But what I love the most about it is when you go, if you're still doing local design, let's say they do call in two or three different designers. You're walking in with a color muse and you're interpreting the information in a more scientific way. You're going to make yourself memorable. I'm always saying to everyone, you have to make yourself memorable. Oh, people don't forget me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's this is a way of distinguishing yourself, right? I don't believe in the word competition. I don't care, right? What anyone else yeah. is doing, just worry about yourself. But if you're yeah. worrying about yourself and you're looking to make yourself different, this is one way that the designer who has the same territory as you is probably not going to also have the same scientific certification. Well, you know, people have chosen lanes. There are people who think that the right thing to do is show up with a stack of paint chips or a stack of boards and you shuffle through the boards until you find one that matches the couch. And, you know, you're working with that limited number of boards that you walked in the door with. When I walk in the door, I have my iPad and my toolbox is full of more than 30 brands. That's amazing. Dad, we have a question. Hold on. It's another big one. Hi, Lori. This is very interesting. I missed the beginning of the Facebook Live. Did you say where you learned about this science initially? Did you learn about it in school? And where do you get amused with your course or do we purchase separately? And actually, I, I'm glad you're asking this, Laura, because I said to Lori that I was going to ask her about her background and then I got right into the whole color thing and never asked you about your background. So I love this question. How yeah. did you find out about this and how did you get into this? Well, I talked myself into a job that I wasn't qualified for in 1990 something. <laughs> and um, I was actually an executive assistant for a senior vice president of sales for a Fortune 500 company. And I did a lot of event planning. And back in the day, uh, you didn't just download some kind of a template for invitations and, you know, uh, little 
you know, fun stuff, all of the stuff that goes with an event, you didn't, the, those weren't pre-printable. You had to design them. So we had a staff artist. And so <clears throat> I would work with her to design all of these events, sales kickoffs, you know, uh, annual awards banquets, which were huge, people from multiple states, big events I was responsible for, in addition to being his executive assistant and ordering boat cushions, right? <laughs> Literally, I did that once. <laughs> and, um, and they were the perfect color, by the way. And um, so um, I introduced our artist to my brother-in-law and they ended up getting married. And so she quit her job and moved to Cleveland to be with him, moved to Akron to be with him. And so I said, hey, can I have her job? And I wanted her job because I knew, because I was the executive assistant, I saw the whole budget. I knew that they were completely renovating, redoing the entire art department and they were getting all brand new equipment and the very first color printers ever <laughs> were released in the early 1990s and they were getting all of it right they were getting Macs, they're getting all the apple stuff and it's like and i went in and i saw that they had because nobody knew how to use any of it i saw that they had training mapped out to go with this for all of the artists all of the graphic designers Ooh, nice yeah. I said, can I do that? And he told me, he said, I'll give you 90 days. <laughs> and if you don't cut it in 90 days, Lori, we're, you know, sorry. And I ended up being there for 13 years. Wow. And that's, that's where a graphic I was. designer, graphic artist. Yep. That's where, you know, and I could draw a little bit. I'm not an illustrator by any means, but when it can't, when it comes to layout and proportion and scale, I've always had a sense for that. And I was actually able to prove myself to an extent because of all of the stuff I had designed for the events. And so, you know, it just wasn't, you know, I had something to go on. It's like, Hey, give me a shot at this. And they're like, okay. And so I took it and ran with it. And then that's where I learned all of the old school, um, science and the right way to do color because there's only one way there's only one color system that every industry across the globe uses no matter what they're manufacturing everybody uses the same system and that's what i teach you in camp chroma and that's what i learned 25 years ago what is the system <laughs> oh nancy you're gonna okay it's called everything is based on the munsell color order system Hi. Munsell. He was an American artist. His name was Albert Munsell. And he created this color order system. And then international committees of color scientists had to develop standards so they could make color. Right? Really? Yeah. I mean, making color, making things in color is a tough thing to do. You know, that's, you know, Pantone isn't a color order system. Pantone is a color naming system. <laughs> That's what I think. I'm like, what's the Pantone color of the year? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So it gets, you know, it's, um, it's really interesting because, and this is why this world was so foreign to me because I'm, I'm used to the industry aspect of it. Everybody working from the same standards, everybody working from the same system. And then I came to the architectural space. It's like, there are all of these, individual homespun methodology methodologies where you're like counting the number of you know fans in the fan deck and splitting up a fan deck i'm like you people are out of your freaking minds <laughs> okay wait so you got interested in color the history of color the science behind color and you just dove in and started studying it like what happened well that you know when i took that job they taught it to us we had to know it oh we had to understand it. I was the front of, I was the beginning of a very big workflow loop and shit rolls downhill. Mm -hmm. so I had to know what I was doing because down the line, it was nothing but money. And where did you decide, and this isn't going back to Lara's question, when did you decide to create a course out of the knowledge you had gained from working for this company Mm -hmm. for interior designers? Like, when did you come up with that? Well, like I said, I kind of hung back for a little bit and thought, well, maybe there's something I don't know. You know, maybe there's, and then I found in a fan deck LRV and I'm like, there's a glimmer of hope here. And so I started pulling threads. You know, it's like, well, what do you have, Benjamin Moore? Well, what do you have, Sherwin Williams? And all of these people didn't have anything but marketing. <laughs> Right? They have nothing to talk about, nothing to say but color of the year. 
And I had to go pretty deep into these organizations to find the color scientists. Oh. And yeah. what did you do when you found them? Asked them what the hell's going on. And, <laughs> you know, it's like, why, you know, why does, why do designers think colors work this way? Why are, why are designers, why have they been left to their own devices to develop their own methods and their own systems for specifying color? You know, you bring up such a good point. And listen, you have Camp Chroma. And we're going to make sure we say that a lot. Camp Chroma, where you get and you get taught the science behind color. But it's a really interesting point. Why doesn't Benjamin Moore or Sherwin Williams teach this to designers? But you have it. So. Well, it's, you know, again, we go back to the fact that this looks hard from the outside, right? The diagrams and some, and, and I'll be honest with you, other color courses try to use that as leverage to um, kind of marginalize what I do. It's like, oh, all those diagrams, they're going to make your eyes glaze over. Those words, spectrophotometer, it's so big. <laughs> it is big. <laughs> No, no, that that's gonna hurt your head, and you're just a girl. Girls don't do this. Oh no, that pisses me off. Do not say that. <laughs> you know, and but that's the thing. It looks so hard from the outside, but when you get into it, it's ridiculous how simple it is. I mean, because well, you're using technology too to aid in. Yeah, and you know that's the other thing that designers need to be concerned about. The technology is pushing this forward. Yeah. I just watched a video from Data Color the other day with a couple of Data Color executives, and they were talking about, um, you know, their color reader tool. And they're recognizing right now that there are no designers who can toggle effortlessly between art and science. That it's a unicorn. It's a purple squirrel. If you're a color strategist, you are a purple squirrel. <laughs> because you can think in terms of color notations and color measurements as easily as you can think in terms of textures and proportion and scale. Interesting. And these tools require someone who can do both. You can't just pick one, you know, if you're gonna be a color consultant going forward, an architectural color consultant specifically, you're not going to be able to just pick the creative lane and stay in it. You're not going to. Now, if you prefer to lean that way and work that way most of the time, fine, work however you want to work. Right. But you have to at least be aware and have a minimal working knowledge of what's going on because it's your industry and this is what's happening. The technology isn't going to go away. It's not going to get smaller. And no, I think that the technology is moving faster than a lot of the designers are moving. And that's part of what's intimidating to them. And I yeah. think that they have to really look for things that they can wrap their mind around. And that is may sound complicated, but it's really not. No, you know, it's, um, not. it's not. You know, sometimes, and, and I'm in the middle of writing a book, I mean, sometimes our fear and thinking about something is takes, we spend so much time thinking about it instead of just doing it. And it takes so much less time to actually do it. Then exactly. it, spin it in your head over and over again in the intimidation of actually doing it. Um, investing in yourself is really important. And not just, I'm not talking just money. I'm talking time, right? Investing in learning something new that is going to keep you up in the market that's mm -hmm. ever changing and new ways to make money. So yeah. tell everyone, we've been talking for an hour, tell everybody how to find you and Camp Chroma and... Um, what they need to know. What they need to know. Well, it's not intimidating. In Camp Chroma, it's, you know, I keep it in a very executive summary format. I tell you exactly what you need to know. And if you want to know more than that, then I have more resources than, you know, I have, before I publish anything, I like to have at least one resource that I can cite. And it has to be a quality resource. I'm not talking about somebody's blog or Wikipedia. I'm talking about hardcore resources. So if you want more resources, I can give you as many as you want for everything I talk about. But I give you the executive summary, just what you need to know. I have a problem in my course, I'll tell you what that is. <laughs> um, I load it up on the front end so people can start using 
this technology and this information immediately. So as they go through the course and they're doing the exercises, they have they get a kit with hands-on exercises. As they're working through it, they can they they can learn what questions they need to ask, right? So that's why I load it all up in front. Problem is, as I have designers getting through half my course and going, oh my God, this is like incredible. And then they go off and start working and they don't come back and finish. I know this is a course issue. I have a course too. They jump around and get what they think they need and not the full course. So it rounds out their knowledge. So anyone who's listening, if you've taken Lori's course or my course, finish the course. Don't finish. feel, jump around. If you, I, I In the beginning of my course, the interior design profit formula, I say, do not jump around. People jump around anyway, because I can see what they're doing in the background. <laughs> you may not know I can see what they're doing, but finish your courses that you purchase, because there's a reason why we put all the information we do in there. Yes, you can start and immediately applying what we're teaching, but you want to make sure you round out your knowledge and finish it. So is it campchroma.com? It is campchroma.com. And that's, you know, that's why I made it, made it a certification course because I don't give them the badge and, or the certificate until they finish the course and complete all the assignments and the quizzes. So that's another reason why it's a certification course, but it is campchroma.com. And um, right now the only course that's open is the four pillars of color course. And like I said, it's everything you need to know to do everything we talked about today. It's amazing. This was a great conversation. Thank you, Lori, for being The other thing I want to tell you, because you were talking about the artwork and how you were loading up and describing it and everything and hows. Yeah, so if you would pull all of the colors from, you know, that piece of artwork and you published the color notations, like, you know, the hue value chroma notation to go with it, you wouldn't have to describe it with words. People could just read the notation and say, that has the perfect color of blue green that I need to go with the sofa. I'm going to buy that picture online. And the way, you know, the way people are working online now is they're requiring their clients to take all kinds of pictures and go through all kinds of gymnastics to send them this information to do e-design. And, you know, you have to ask your client to do something to get you some kind of information, take measurements or whatever. So including a color muse and having them send you screenshots of the fixed finishes and important elements, it, it's not it, It's not that much of an imposition. Right. It's part of the process and it makes you, it will make you do a better design in the end for them. Exactly. So, yeah. But yeah, we could talk, you know, we could talk for another five hours, Nancy. Oh my God. I know. I could actually. <laughs> this is so interesting. So, all right. Well, everyone, thank you for being here for Weekend Wind Down. I'll give you one more last cheers. Cheers. Uh, Thanks, Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank you, uh, Lori Sawaya, for being here, uh, campchroma.com, to look into her four pillars of color yep, certification, um, which sounds fascinating to me and something that if you're looking for an additional stream of income and a science-based backing to what you do, I think this is fascinating. I'm here. My specialty is making sure you are profitable marketing and sales and helping you make decisions on which way to grow your business. So if you need me, go to nancyganzacoffer.com and sign up for a consultation with me. Um, you know, listen, I'm in the middle of doing a case study with one of my clients who has increased her business profitability by 600% because it's like, there's so, it's so hard to run a business and know what decisions to make at what time. And that's what I'm here for. I consider myself your business partner when I work with you. So thank you, Lori, for being here. And thank you everyone for watching. We're getting tons of thank yous. And I will see everyone next week for Weekend Wind Down. Bye. Bye. Guys.